Ron, ready to go? Yeah, let's roll. I call this meeting to order of the USD 49 Board of Education for January 27th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. First item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Any discussion, board members? Okay. Oh, we're going to take a vote, so all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I hear no opposed. Please also vote electronically using board docs when you can. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Motion passes 6 to 0. Okay. Next item is the um, <coughs> board communication. I added this to the agenda because I wanted to provide some information to board members and to the public. Uh, this uh, section of the meeting will primarily focus on procedures. Board members have received much of this information already during training, but I believe it's a good idea for the public to hear it too. Um, plus, this is a good way, probably the only way for me to provide information to the entire board at one time. First item that I want to talk about is the agenda. Item BCBD in our policy manual states that the agenda for each meeting is compiled by the superintendent in cooperation with the board president, and that's me. If you have any items for the agenda, board members, please let me know. Second item is executive session. Item BCBK of the manual outlines executive sessions. The motions to move into executive session must include a purpose, justification, and length of time. To extend time, another motion is needed. This is why four members of the board return to the open meeting for a quick vote. Over time, this becomes very routinized and happens very quickly. Talking to board members here. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone is aware of what's going on, but I also want to move quickly through these transitions. So at any point in time when this stuff's flying around, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, closing the meeting. Uh, as you have probably noticed, sometimes the meeting is closed with all board members present, and other times I simply walk in the room and close the meeting myself. In each case, I have received agreement from the majority of the board to end the meeting, uh, which is policy. But this may not always be obvious or understood. So to make everything more clear and transparent, from now on I will ask for a, meet, a vote at the end of each meeting. So if we're ending an executive session, I will ask four board members to come back into the main room and close the meeting with me. Fourth item is a superintendent's evaluation. Item CEI in our manual states that the superintendent's evaluation is due prior to the first meeting in February. In this case, February 10th. The board completed the evaluation of the superintendent on ja uh, January 16th, but we have four new board members. So we will have a short executive session meeting tonight so that I can uh, review the process with, the four, uh, with all the board members that are here. Uh, you'll be able to look over the evaluation form we used and provide your own comments if you want to. And then when I have everything, I'll meet with Ron and we'll turn the evaluation over to him. Okay, that is the end of my lecture there on how things go. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the consent agenda. As we can see, the <coughs> consent agenda includes financials, board meeting minutes from January 13th, personnel transactions, uh, Hayes High Recreation Commi uh, Commission notes or minutes and the ECC director's report. I will uh, call for a vote to accept all of these items at one time, but we will have time for discussion if you want to discuss these. I move to accept the consent agenda as written. Do I have a second? I second. All right, it's been moved and second by Lori. Thank you. Any discussion? Actually, I have some. Hold on a second. I would like to welcome some new employees to USD 49. I would like to welcome Shaylin, Isaiah, Brandon, Kaylee, Colleen, Nicole, Caitlin, Penny, and Delaney. Welcome to USD 49. May the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second for, to approve the consent agenda. I'm going to call for a vote now. All in favor of approving the consent agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 6 to 0. Please vote electronically as well. All righty. Now, moving on to the next item on our agenda is recognitions. 
I'm going to turn the floor over to Ron. Okay. Uh, we've got several recognitions we'd like to, uh, I guess, recognize. So let's start with this. Um, first on our uh, Make a Difference Award, um, we would like, um, if I could have Mackenzie and Katie uh, step forward. Yeah, uh, kind of if you stand over here so the crowd can come right here in the corner, right in front of Shannon. Yeah. There you go. You have a very odd shape of room, so. Yeah, that way. <coughs> uh, the Kansas Horizon Award Program identifies and recognizes representatives of excellent teaching in the elementary and secondary classrooms of the state. The mission of the program is to recognize exemplary first year teachers who perform in a way that distinguishes them as outstanding. We would like to recognize Mackenzie Justice. You want to wave so everyone knows that you. <laughs> the elementary nominee and Katie Weitzel, the secondary nominee uh, for USD 489. Both Mackenzie and Katie, along with the help of their administrators, completed an application for the state recognition. Although neither was selected at the state level, we are very proud of both of them and honor them for being outstanding teachers in our district. Mackenzie teaches fourth grade at Roosevelt, and Katie teaches high school at Westside. Congratulations, ladies, and thanks for representing our district so well. Yes. Okay, I'd like uh, Marie Henderson and Kyle Carlin to step forward. We'd like to also take the opportunity this evening to congratulate Marie Henderson and Kyle Carlin for being selected uh, to present at the 2019 Learning Forward Annual National Conference held in St. Louis in December. Their presentation entitled Flexible Learning Experience uh, redesigning was for Redesigning Professional Learning was among more than 300 concurrent sessions offered to attendees. The Flex Learning Framework developed by Marie Henderson is an innovative approach to professional learning. Both Marie and Kyle have launched the program in each of our schools with the expectation that all teachers will participate in a flex activity during one of our spring early release days. And this has been an awesome program and we thank all the work that you guys have done. So thanks for that. In addition, uh, Marie uh, was among one of four educators in Kansas selected to serve alongside 550 educators across the United States in being named Microsoft Innovative Educator and Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Thousands of educators apply each year to be a part of this program. The Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert Program is an exclusive program created to recognize global educators who have vision who are using technology to pave the way for their peers and the effective use of technology for better learning and student outcomes. These experts help Microsoft lead innovation in education. Um, Microsoft Innovative Educator Experts meet online once a month to share resource, resources and innovative practices. They are also given access to training portals with hundreds of presentations available for use in their schools and across their districts and re regions. Congratulations, Marie, and we are very fortunate to have you in our district serving us. Thanks to both of you. Good job. Okay, uh, moving on to the Student Spotlight Awards. Uh, we would like to recognize, 
First, let's have the O'Loughlin Elementary Chess Team come forward. And Ms. Guile, you can just have them come up here in the corner. Come on up here, guys, right here in the corner. You can come on. There you go, man. That away. There you go, right there. who has been here as part of the Hayes High School uh, Chess Club. She's a master chess player. She's done enough tournaments and she now is a master chess player. And she approached us three years ago wanting to start a chess club at O'Loughlin. And uh, three years ago on the first year, we actually had a team that played in the TNP tournament back then. And they did really well and came out with first place for the elementary level then. Last year it got snowed out so we didn't get to compete, but again this year we had some kids that wanted to go in and compete again. So we actually had two teams here that placed at the elementary level in uh, that TMP tournament that happened here earlier in the month of January. And so <coughs> getting first place in the elementary level was Kiana Sun, Lucas Dreer, Carissa's son, and Eli Reed. Uh, Kiana placed second in the individual. Uh, Lucas was fourth, Carissa was fifth, and Eli was ninth, and so their combined efforts got them a first place trophy at the tournament. And then our other team here is Tyler Luck, who placed sixth place, Camden Luck, who placed eighth place, and Ora Bai placed tenth place, and because of that, they got the third place trophy at TNP. So we are extremely proud of them because they have just been week after week learning skills and in chess, and it's just great for our school. So, That's awesome. thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Come this way, guys. You guys should come this way. It's okay. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Congratulations. I think it's important also um, not only thank the teachers involved, but the parents yeah, <laughs> taking their kids to chess practices and tournaments. And uh, I know they hold tournaments all over the state in some cases. So, yeah, fantastic. Uh, last week, the Hayes High Musical Theater Department put on a student-directed and produced musical called Twisted. Uh, the lead directors uh, are is here tonight, uh, as well as the accompanist and sponsors. Uh, we have Caitlin Liker, Nathan Liker, and the sponsor, Mr. Underwood. So I believe Caitlin is going to say a few things. Yeah. So, um, so everything about our production, from lights and sounds to staging and running music and choreography as Nathan Liker did, all of it was student-driven. And the parents helped. Of course, we couldn't have done it without the support of our parents, but a lot of the projects, it was student coordination and their organization and leadership with everyone. And we ended up raising about $5,000 for chamber singers. And everybody pitched in a little bit, and we all did our part, and it turned out really good. Wow. In spite of some really crummy weather, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so. And we went out and put in a lot of rehearsal hours and over winter break, and it really just paid off. So. It was just really impressive that uh, watch a student directed the project, and uh, the director of the project is Andrew Duke. Andrew's uh, at a regional scholars bowl tournament right now, um, but he he was the one who was really spearheaded the project, and then along with these two, uh, led the whole project. It was also this Eagle Scout project, which I think is really cool. Um, but just a really great uh, educational experience for students to be able to step up and and be the ones really running things. I, I tried as much as I could to just sit in the back and. Let them let them figure it out on their own without me sort of solving the problems for them. So 
Anyway, it was just impressive and inspiring to watch their work. So, uh, anyway, awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, we had some uh, champion spellers in our in our school, so we have uh, Lincoln Elementary. If you'd like to come forward and talk about your spellers. And then here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to have you all go through it once. So if you just want to step back, and we will have Wilson Elementary. If is, is she be? She's not here. Okay. Um, come on up. We have some champion spellers, and I, I tell us your names. Say that again. Okay, Case and Hardman, and Parker. Unruh. Okay. Champion spellers uh, from Wilson. If you just want to step back and we'll have you go through the line here in just a second. O'Laughlin. Job. We'll have you guys step back so we can have. Do we have Rose of any Roosevelt spellers with us tonight? No Roosevelt spellers. Uh, middle school. I don't think we have some middle school. Spellers. So let's, I'm going to introduce Misty Norris because Misty runs the spelling bee for us. So I'd like to just kind of say thank you to Misty for all she's doing. Our five will come up, come up as well. So stand up in front, and we'll let Misty introduce you. So come all right, so we have our four finalists in our alternate with us. We have eighth grader Trace Hill who won the Hayes Middle School Spelling Bee. We have um, eighth grader Logan Daniels. Uh, William Noble is a seventh grader. Delia Dixon is a sixth grader. And then Aiden Burton is our alternate this year. Congratulations. Congrats. Nice job. Excellent. Let's uh, congratulate him. <laughs> And also, uh, I don't believe we have Mr. Albers. Is Adam and Amrine here? No, Not here. He's, he's okay. Okay, I just thought, well, it's worth mentioning, Adam Amrine, who is, uh, goes to Hayes Middle School, he was an undefeated league champion for our, boys, our middle school boys wrestling team this year. And he's not in attendance, but uh, congratulations to him. So that's it. All righty. 
So I guess I need to tell my obligatory spelling bee joke. And when I was in school, I thought I only had to spell one letter. Spelling B. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Now it's time for uh, public forum, public comment. This is an opportunity for folks in the audience, who have mostly left, <laughs> to uh, provide uh, speak to the board if you'd like to do so. Ready? I guess we'll move on to the next item. Uh, item number five is reports. So first we have report from Rusty, maintenance and facilities update. Good evening. Just gonna give you a quick update, sort of where we're at on uh, buildings and grounds, uh, go through some of the bids that I'm currently working on. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be bringing some bids in over the next couple months uh, for partly to finish up this fiscal year and then to start next fiscal year. I sort of broke it out. Um, HVAC, I know as we've done the building tours, we've talked about that quite a bit and where we're at on it. I'm gonna start with it. Um, total tickets this year on HVAC in the 100, first 140 days since July is 266. 104 of those are at the high school. And then about 40, 45 go through uh, O'Laughlin, Wilson, and uh, Roosevelt. <clears throat> so we've got quite a bit of need in uh, refrigeration in those, those four buildings. Uh, got a little bit of some work tickets at the middle school. For the most part, that's all new system over there. And in looking at those tickets, it basically goes to the FEMA section. And whenever we have a power outage on it, it kicks those units out and we don't catch it right away. And by the time I get it caught, we've got like six tickets turned in and we figure out we just need to reset it and then we're back off and going again. So it's a little bit of a misnomer. One of the things that we've been working on is the high school. Uh, the last building that we worked on, the, the ones that haven't been involved, just to get you up to speed. We replaced the units in the gyms, uh, the wrestling room area, multi-purpose, took over the lecture hall and some other areas in there, all the big common spaces. We tried one room, uh, 145. We put in a rooftop unit that's sized for the room, that's variable speed. I was looking at either, um, um, i just blank the, the initials, um, variable speed refrigerant was one of the, the uh, VRF, there we go, one of the uh, options that I was looking at, and then they also, with these rooftop units, they've come out with variable <coughs> speed on them, and they're very uh, efficient, almost as efficient as the VRF. Uh, the thing about the high school, it has a lot of makeup air vents on the roof for every one of the rooms and it allowed us to go in and basically go through the curb that we have there, set a unit, pick up the ductwork that we had there. The wiring's already there because they're heat pump units. So basically the only thing we need to do is uh, take gas line to the units because we need natural gas for them to operate. Over the last four years we've been working on this project piecemealing together different pieces of it. I've been working with a uh, engineer out of Wichita, it's Integrated Solutions. They've done the drawings and everything for that building as far as what we've completed. We've talked about the direction that we want to head with it. One of the things I'm going to be bringing back in, and I just want to start it tonight just to get you a feel for where I'm going with that. We've got to quit piecemeal and we've got to start taking some steps to start doing some replacement. When we were doing the bond, the last bond, the high school was not included in the bond as far as HVAC. We were going to step out and do that on our own. So we started doing parts of it. <clears throat> we've already got a history with integrated solutions, already have a direction that we're going, a plan. The only thing we haven't done is step out and go ahead and get the drawings put together and get it to put together to where we can do a bid. What I'm gonna to propose to you here in the next couple meetings is going ahead and hiring them to complete the plans. Now it's not a cheap venture. Um, it's gonna be about 100,000 to go ahead and get the plans done. The way we were gonna do the plans is that we could take it in portions and bite off what we can afford to do. 
The first thing that we need to do is get the infrastructure in for the gas train, uh, get the natural gas up on the roof. After that, we can bite off as many units as we want. If, if we can replace two or three a year, or if we can replace a whole section a year, whatever, if we decide to look at um, lease purchase, whatever we decide to do, we've at least got the drawings and we've got the means to bid it. So I'm gonna be coming back in to visit with you that, but that's one building. We've got three other buildings we need to be thinking about at that same time because it's got to the point that we're, we're having a real issue with keeping up. And if we hire staff to do it, we've just spent more money on staff and less money on replacement. If I hire companies to come in to do it to help pick up some of the slack, now we're putting money into that and not into replacement. So I'm sort of at that crossroads that I'm, I'm running into a need without too many options other than replacement. So that's sort of where we're at on HVAC. Um, the other thing I'm gonna be bringing into you is parking lots. Um, I got some repairs coming up and then I've currently got, uh, we've been working on replacement at the high school. So you'll be seeing a bid come in for continuation of that. Working on roofs right now. I went back on the roofs. Um, when I first came here, Francis and I were talking and we went through all the roofs. And pretty much, Lee, there's two roof systems that we have. One's TPO, and it's uh, fully adhered, and the other is going to be EPDM. And the EDPM roofs look basically like an inner tube in a, in a tire. They're a black roof. They oxidize. It's hard to tell a new roof from an old roof because they oxidize so fast so when you get up on them. Pretty much my understanding of what I'd been working on on that is the EDPM roofs were the older roofs because they had switched to TPO. I've got one building that I've currently got out for bid that I've got two EDPM roofs that are still under warranty and they're on Wilson. And I'm gonna be bringing that in. That's another conversation we're gonna have is why am I looking at replacing those roofs if they're still under warranty? Well, there's two sections in there. They were placed in 2011. I'm looking at another, there was two other sections in there that were put in in the 90s that are need to, re, to be replaced. Unfortunately, the two sections that are still under warranty are where I'm having all the issues. And I'm caught in a catch-22 on that because two years ago, for the ones that were here, we had a young man from another community get up on the roof with pocket knife and he started sticking a hole, playing mumbly peg on that uh, EDPM roof, EPDM roof, and it's got basically what they call a Dems deck underneath of it it's which is similar to sheetrock. We counted close to 50 holes that we repaired on that, and we still keep finding holes. They were just little knife nicks through it. And what we got repaired, we, uh, we thought we had it, and over the last couple of years, we just keep finding more open spots on it. Currently, I'm keeping, gonna keep patching it. I put the O'Loughlin roof out for bid, I also done a second, an alternate bid to include those three sections on Wilson, just to get a budget figure and to see where I'm at on it. Okay. Might still continue to try to patch it for another year and see where we're at. I, you know, we're caught because the warranty's not gonna cover it because it was damaged outside of the warranty and we patched what we found as far as holes there and that two years, I, I'm not sure where I'm at on that. So I wanna do some more checking, but I'm letting you know that's sort of where we're at. The roof at Roosevelt's currently, we bid it out last year. It's being put on now. I look for it to be finished up in the next two to three weeks. The other roof that I have out right now is the bus barn. I've visited with you about that already. Um, we're switching it from a uh, build-up roof or looking at switching it. It was a little more complicated, so I didn't bid this one myself. I actually had uh, Mark Regeer, the architect that worked on the uh, ECC, help me with this bid spec. It's, um, <clears throat> it's a build-up roof, and what we're wanting to do is basically switch it over to a metal roof to match the rest of the building. And then it has the uh, windows on the south side, and we get a lot of water in through that. Didn't seem like it was gonna be a terribly expensive project until we found asbestos in the roof decking, and that changed the project. That about doubled it. So I was looking at doing it out of this year's budget, but with uh, increased costs, it'll be next year. It's currently out for bids. I haven't got anything back on it. You'll be seeing that bid coming in here well, probably within the next month. Um, secured entrances, um, currently working on uh, Roosevelt, uh, looking at a secured entrance there. 
there was monies raised for that, um, should at least get the, mo the biggest portion of it. We may have to add some money to it, but we should look at being able to secure the entrance at Roosevelt this year. Locks, uh, I purchased locks last year to do ECC, high school, middle school, and Roosevelt. ECC is completed, Roosevelt is completed, and we're working on the high school and middle school, and I hope to have that completed at spring break. We also just received a grant, and I told you that at the last meeting or the walkthrough at Lincoln. Um, we went ahead and um, are looking at taking bids on that. I have that set up to do the first part of March uh, to get the bid specs out for that and start looking at replacing locks at um, Wilson, Lincoln, O'Laughlin, and then uh, transportation and if the money allows here at Rockwell. You'll be seeing a fire alarm. Um, we have to have annual inspections on all of our fire alarms in the buildings. Uh, that's been a contracted service. I uh, usually put that out for a three-year bid. Uh, that bid comes due this year. This was our last year, that three-year contract. We do have another uh, fire alarm company that has moved to town, so we might have a little more competition in that one, but I'll be putting that bid out here pretty soon. Here in a little bit, I'm going to be talking about the buildings and grounds pickup and then also the tractor um, that I'm looking at for next fiscal year. And those are sort of the things that I've got going now, along with some other things. Um, I believe you guys got a spreadsheet that has listed out. There's some things on there that uh, we're working on, uh, like a garage door at the welding shop at the high school, um, a fence project at Roosevelt, and um, some different ones that are low enough that they don't, you know, low enough cost that they don't require board action, but um, just to give you a heads up of sort of what we're working on. Questions, anything as far as, I know someone asked me about lighting project the last time. We've been working on a little bit of lighting as we go. Uh, did look at, they have came out with some new LEDs that look promising. John's checking into those. We've actually bought a few of them to try to see how they work. They're a lower profile um, at uh, Wilson and um, O'Laughlin. They have um, <clears throat> drop ceilings in there and the, the fixtures are the way they're mounted, they're surface mounted on, onto the drop ceiling. The new um, fixtures that we're looking at are actually the thickness of the, of the track so we can actually get them up in the ceiling so I think it's going to work, work out better. So as far as lighting projects, we're still working on that. I uh, still have some tuck pointing that I'm working on at some of the different buildings. Um, and then the next thing that I'm going to start looking at after that is uh, windows and doors. We're still, we've still got some areas out there that need to be looked at. Are the locks you're doing, Rusty, is that bringing those other buildings up to, I knew you, a couple of years ago, you had implemented that new lock system, you'd said, for being able to rekey things much quicker and stuff like that. Is this bringing It'll allow us to move cores. It'll allow us to rekey and do everything So it's in kind of bringing those other buildings up. It'll bring the other buildings in. We got the grant uh, last year. It's a matching grant. And it, I think it was like 57,000 and we matched it and that let me do the, the first four buildings. Uh, we got the same grant this year. That should let me finish up the rest of the district. And I, I believe Rockwell will be able to be included so that in that too. puts them all on the same system. It puts them all on the same system. It's a great grandmaster system. So there's one key that would operate the district and then the grandmaster keys that operate different portions of the district and then down to your master keys for your buildings and so on. So, wow. Thank you. I don't, I don't necessarily have a question, Rusty. Thank you for all that you're sharing. I think, and, and perhaps I'm an island here, but some of the projects you work on is, I've, I've gotten in bits and pieces. So I'm, I'm actually sharing my ignorance here of, of the, the, your world is hard for me to get my head wrapped around. And so I appreciate this form, and I don't know whether there's other materials to kind of help with our onboarding in terms of, and I've seen some different um, reports, but I'm, I'm getting them at different times. And so I, I don't know how, because obviously if you're coming next month to possibly right. request, I'd like to not. You're, have, and also you guys are more than welcome anytime that you want to come up and visit. I would gladly show you around and show you some of my, the one thing I guess I want to differ, differentiate is that 
<clears throat> as far as like the bond, I haven't really been involved in the bond side of it. I'm more involved on just the, the routine maintenance and trying to take, catch things up that are outside of the bond or that if we don't get a bond that we're going to have to, to get caught up. And <clears throat> the main ones that are of concern to me, HVAC is a big concern. Uh, if you've listened to me in here, plumbing's another one that's a big concern um, in the buildings. We've got some issues in there that we address, but we're addressing what, what we're seeing. We're not addressing what, you know, there's things that we're, we're not seeing right now, but there's, there's issues there. Um, I've been trying on the exterior of the buildings to address roofs, uh, address uh, all the masonry, because that's the other place. A lot of, when I got here, a lot of the roof leaks that we had weren't really roof leaks as much as they were masonry leaks that were coming in on corners and stuff and looked like roof leaks. Um, windows and doors are another big one. Uh, if you look at the buildings, they've updated them years ago and there's a lot better window treatments out there. Lighting was a big issue to start with. We've addressed a lot of the lighting in the bigger areas and um, parking lots, gymnasiums, that's where our biggest paybacks were on those. We've addressed those. Now we're trying to go back and start catching up some of the classrooms and stuff. Um, if, I'm sure when you go through the building tours, they're gonna talk about floor coverings and stuff. I've held off on that some because, you know, there was bond talk when I got here six years ago and we keep going through and I, there's part of that I get hung up on because I'm trying to determine what I'm going to do that's best if we do pass a bond and also what I need to do just to make things work for day to day, the day to day use that we're at. So it's sort of a mixed bag based on where you guys are headed. And do you end up looking at it as a per building type project or do you look at it like you say windows and doors and lighting and, and that's district wide or? I probably should have brought it in for the new board members. I basically triage it like you'd triage a patient if you were an ambulance person. I take each building and I look at the issues that are in the building and then try to look at what the main issues are and then take those issues and address those either through repair or replacement. I've been trying to do as much replacement as I can, and that's where I try to put my budget. Since I've, I've, I'll be here six years in July, the first few years I was able to take some money and put back to do some larger projects, some HVAC projects, and then we've done some leach purchase with that. So, chiller, what I based it on was the chiller at Roosevelt, it was about $250,000 to replace that chiller and there were some issues with it and since then we figured out it was a control issue more than it was a chiller issue and we got that resolved. Um, we, <clears throat> I budgeted $250,000 for that. So what I'd done is I put that in and I used it as a contingency reserve. So at the end of the year, the superintendents had been, they've allowed me to carry that over into the <coughs> next year and use that as a contingency reserve. And then the next year I could carry that over. So in like a two or three year span, I could get seven or 800,000 that I could put toward an HVAC project. We're getting to the point that the repairs are not allowing me to do that. Last year I only carried over 100,000 because we used the rest of it up. And I'm, I haven't been, I was hoping to basically get stabilized enough over the next year and a half that I could start putting some money back to do those kind of things. Now, last year I spent a little bit more money on locks because as we're putting in the, um, the um, keyed locks, we're also putting in some card reader locks to secure. So <clears throat> the first thing we done is went around the perimeter of all the buildings and secured all the outside perimeter with card reader locks and, and locks that no one has keys to so that we could control entries. And then, so that was a little more expensive than what I originally had planned on. But that's where I'm, where I'm headed. I can give you, I mean, if you let me know as a board sort of what you want or what you want as a report, I can, I can put something We've together for you. We've seen something and that may, yeah. I mean, I remember a very colorful spreadsheet right. that had so maybe that's the plan that yeah we and, need to and he uh, rusty consistently i think updates that that multicolored. i don't know if he has it updated as of today but um, well i brought it in i was trying to remember how long ago it's been just a few board meetings yeah, ago no, yeah. it would actually be in your yeah. board docs at some month i don't know we can find that okay. but it, he might have an updated one by now okay yeah. i think that would be helpful to have 
at the next conversation. Okay. I can do yeah, that. Rusty, you said Easy. that there were 266 from July until right now have yep. been completed. They haven't, that hasn't been all completed. I probably got 24 or so that are outstanding right now. And that's parts that are ordered or we've had some, you know, I don't want this to sound like it's a safety issue, but like at the high school on the heat pumps, they have what they call a low temp switch. And the low temp switch on the, on the heat pump is basically designed so that you don't pull in too cold outside air and freeze up your water lines. The heat pumps are old enough that we're not getting those, we can't find those switches. So basically we wired around them. There's no, there's no limit switch in there as far as a temp switch. And I told Aaron, I said, I'd rather freeze the lines up and have to replace it as to, as to keep going over resetting it and temporary and something. And then two days later, we got a ticket back because it's not working. So we've took some steps like that on that. So we're currently looking for switches. There's a lot of stuff that's outdated. The other one that's gonna be getting us in trouble in Roosevelt and O'Loughlin the fan coil units that we have or univent units that we have in there, they don't make the uh, double <coughs> fan motors anymore with that type of shaft. And we've been having trouble locating that. He's down to one source now and then pretty soon if they quit making that motor, we're gonna not be able to replace the motors in those in those univents. So we're ages, ages of, of everything starting to catch us on what we can do as far as repairs. So. Some of the stuff that's held up on tickets and stuff are held up due to the fact that we're having trouble finding parts. Okay, you said that 104 were the high school? 104 were the high school. And uh, between 40 and 45 were? Basically your elementaries for the- Did that include Lincoln or? Uh, I, could you Lincoln's Lincoln? actually, Lincoln's actually probably the best ticket one we have in here. Let me look. And that's gonna be deceiving. Um, Lincoln is currently, for the year, has had 16 tickets and they're all closed. And they were probably mostly HVAC tickets, or not HVAC, AC tickets. It's the split units. They probably came in in the front part of the year because they have a split unit that does their air conditioning and then they have a steam unit that does their heating. Um, steam units are basically a steel or a cast iron radiator and a lot of them don't even have controls on them. The staff goes over and turns a valve to get the heat when they need it and shut it off when they don't. So it's very primitive. So there's not a lot that's going wrong with it. Uh, it's just like Rockwell is steam heat I and mean, it's the same thing. And the, there's only 15 tickets on Rockwell and most of those are gonna be on the air conditioning side. It's gonna be that equipment and not so much the steam. The other one that's a little bit deceiving too, and Anita brought that up, um, Wilson, they've got some units that they just know don't work and they quit putting tickets on them. There'd probably be more tickets if they were putting them in with the expectation that they were gonna get fixed, but they know that there's just a certain amount that they're gonna to have to tolerate that they're not, that we can't fix. And they're just basically not submitting the tickets because they know it's not gonna do any good. Anita and I talked about that because I'm using the tickets to justify some of the things we need to do, but then <laughs> She doesn't want to put a ticket in for something that's going to be fixed on a daily basis just to, just to run up the ticket count. So we've had that conversation. We both know it's there, and I guess that's something that I would share with you, that some of it is deceiving because there are certain things that staff has basically adjusted to or compromised to do. She's gotten used to it. Yeah. So what was the number for Hayes Middle School? Uh, Hayes Middle School was 19, and like I said, they were about six at a time on the FEMA shelter, so two times a power outage would account for about 12 of those tickets right off the bat. And the others were basically um, control issues, um, basically going back in and resetting the uh, thermostat. So when I, just my rough math, it, Hayes High had about 40% of your total tickets. Yeah, and I, I, I apologize, Alan. I could have put that into a percentage by building. And is that about mainly because of the uh, air conditioning and heating? No, at the high school, the main issue there, and, and Roosevelt also, um, all of our buildings except for the middle school are run on pneumatics. 
So basically you're using air pressure in the building to control and the air pressure, <clears throat> the lowering of air pressure does the heating side, a raising of the air pressure does your, a your AC side of it, your cooling side of it. What we've got in those, in those equipment, there's, there's bellows in there that open and close that make pneumatic switches. Uh, you've got pressure over electric, you've got electric over pressure. Those are starting to leak, and at the start of the school year, it was bad enough that we couldn't create enough air pressure with the compressor to keep the airflow. We had to go through and do a lot of repairs on those. The other part of those on those pneumatic thermostats is they get out of calibration really easy. Um, very many times I'm turning them up and down, and, and we have give staff access to them simply because they're not they're not reliable, so they've got to have to have some movement in them, but the more you raise them up and down, the more likely they are to go out of calibration. So there's a lot of calibration issues. The biggest problem over there is the infrastructure as far as it's a water to water heat pump system, the infrastructure that's carrying the water and the pneumatic controls that are operating it. And then, like I said, a lot of the equipment's dated to the point that we're having trouble getting repair parts for it. Thank well, you. board members, I think we understand that this year is going to be, we're going to have to talk about a bond. <laughs> so I'm just going to let you know that I'll be bringing that to the board at some point. <coughs> and yes, we gave you, we almost put you in an impossible position. Fix things without a bond, but do the best you can. But I think that was a good choice to make that the board and the district uh, pursued. What I'm trying to get at is instead of waiting for a bond to pass, we got to keep moving ahead. So we've got to keep repairing what we can repair, replace what we can replace. But at some point, we, can only, we can't do that much longer. So we're going to have to really do some serious discussion about a, a bond in the near future. But to answer your question, Tammy, you asked if, he, if uh, Rusty looks at building issues or district issues. I think the, issue, the answer is yes. In some cases, it's a building. In some cases, it's like with the locks. Uh, yeah, you might tackle one building at a time, but it's definitely a district-wide uh, issue that we're dealing with. Depending on yeah. what that issue is. And also, <clears throat> it's very dynamic. It's going to change. You know, I I took steps based on bonds and where, where we were looking at a bond to go. Um, Mr. Wilson and I have talked about that. You know, I, I come in here and I say that I'm doing replacement at the high school, middle school in Roosevelt because they've always been in the bonds. I don't want you to misunderstand the fact that we're just ignoring right. all the rest of the buildings. We're doing repairs there, but we were doing less there based on their involvement in the bond. But we're to the point that we've waited on that till we can't wait anymore. They're going to have to get put in the put in the aspect of what we're doing. So it's extremely important for you to do what you're doing here, coming to us early, letting us know that we're going to have some bills coming our way. Because if the community does not support a bond, we're going to have to keep making the repairs and we have to make sure we hold that money uh, aside to, for these things because we're going to have to replace the windows, for example, or the roofs. Is it going to have to happen at some point? The problem is, and I, <clears throat> what I have as far as budget, it would take years. Well, no, I don't mean <laughs> it would take it years and that. years. I mean, I, I don't want you to get that we're going to be able to do it out of right. capital outlay. Right. It's, it's going to take some major money to do it i'm not going to be able to fund it out of what i have as far as budget right now and i think one of the reasons why i asked rusty to come in this evening <clears throat> was and, and this is a credit to juno and christina who who have been on our building tours each month and and a lot of those articles are highlighting some of our deficiencies in our buildings and sometimes mm -hmm. there is a message that maybe people think we're not <laughs> taking care of we're taking care of our buildings with as many dollars as we have possible to, to spend. And so uh, we have a plan and we're being as aggressive as we possibly can be aggressive. And, uh, you know, once again, there's, there's lots of talk at this board table that, that needs to happen about the future of, of our schools and what, what we see going forward. But at the same time, we are really, we need to be moving and not just waiting on that golden bond to suddenly come upon us we've, we've really got to we're going to spend some money and people may think well that's foolish if you're not gonna you know if you're going to go in on a bond issue but we have to we have to be doing this 
And so Rusty and I, we've, we communicate, you know, a lot. And uh, so I do appreciate what Rusty does because he's, he, like you said, he, he, he's kind of, Got it. He's a little behind the eight ball in some of this, and it's yeah. not nothing of, of his fault. So, right. Rusty, I know this is just a short list of the needs, and we have a lot of needs, but the one that really glares, and I know we hate to put anything back, is the secure entrance bids. Uh, I know the secure entrance uh, at Hayes High and at the middle school. Do we have any of the other? And you're looking at it, doing a bid for Roosevelt. I've looked. Um, Would it make sense to look at a bid for all the schools and then do them as quick as possible? Actually, when she was out, I had her look at Wilson. Uh, Lincoln, I have not looked at. I was actually talking about it today. I, I haven't visited with uh, the administrator over there yet. Um, I have an idea that I wanted to visit with her about because it was one of the tougher ones to figure out how to bring a secured entrance in. I had an idea, but I haven't visited with her about it. So I, I, there's thoughts toward them. I just haven't taken the actual steps for That's them. That's just one of those issues that I would hate to put off uh, any longer than we had to. Yeah, I agree. Makes sense. Yeah. And, and by all means, I, I didn't mean to suggest that there wasn't a plan or, and I, and I. Oh, well, I get what you're right. asking me. No, yeah, uh, no. it's, it's it, more you're me fine. just trying to get a grasp over the, <clears throat> the, the nuances of what you have to live with and, and certainly that balance between being proactive and reactive. Well, um, just to, to make, your, just to make you have an idea, when I came here, I'd been doing buildings and grounds for a approximately 33 years and I was figuring it was going to take me three to five years to get it all figured out when I got here so if you get it done in a few months you're going to be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll be doing good yes thanks for thanks for coming and thanks for putting um, we're probably going to have a lot of these kind of discussions aren't we yep we that's fine we do yeah. thank you thank you bad, trustee. Thank thanks you. Rusty all right next item is the superintendent's communications okay i just have a few uh, quick things uh, that i wanted to uh, run by you just so everyone is uh, aware uh, we have a uh, <clears throat> work study session coming up on february 2th that'll be at o'laughlin and once again we'll have a, another tour um, and and we'll uh, look at several different things that evening after the tour um, and once again, is 6.30 still the time that everyone would like to start those tours? Is that still good with everyone? I think so. Okay. I think it's good to stay on the same time. Um, also, uh, also wanted to thank our, our new board members, uh, Foundations of Boardmanship Training. They spent, our new board members spent all day Saturday uh, in training uh, so they could sit here and uh, be prepared for today and hopefully uh, it was it was a great day and we I uh, think had some great uh, conversations and uh, got some things figured out yeah. also just a reminder and this is not that we need to uh, designate uh, our negotiators for next year I know that's a little tongue-in-cheek but uh, we do have a training here in Hayes on February 25th so it's about a month away and uh, if, if we just want to be thinking about that, uh, that it is a required training for anyone who is going to be nego negotiating. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. Also in your packet, I I've included a letter from the city of Hayes, uh, just about the proposed uh, redevelopment district north of I-70 for the construction of the travel plaza. I think this is a requirement on the city's part to notify uh, the board I'm just uh, passing it along to you. Nothing needs to be done. There is a meeting on February 13th at 6.30 uh, should you want to participate and learn more about uh, that redevelopment. Travel plus. Okay. And those are really all I have to share this evening. All righty. Thanks, Juan. Any questions before we move on? Anybody? Okay. Uh, item six, board committee uh, appointments. All right, up on the screen, I think we'll be able to see the uh, current, oops, not showing up. You, there we go, okay, we're getting there. Okay, so uh, these are appointments that uh, the president makes for different committees. And the committees we have right now are the Early Childhood Connections Policy Committee, 
the Hayes Area Children's Center Board, the KASB Convention Representative, USD 49 Foundations for Excellence Board, Hayes Recreation Commission Board, and the Technology Committee. So, what I'd like to do, well, obviously some of the folks on these committees are no longer board members, so well, I just want to uh, want the board to look at these here, and we can discuss uh, if you would like to be appointed to one of these committees, and if you don't know, we can discuss one-on-one -on -one what these committees do, or in an executive session if you want to do so. Uh, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and volunteer to stay on the Hayes Area Children's Center Board. The reason the USD 49 has a board member on that board is because the... You said uh, chamber, but you meant Children's Center? <laughs> Did I say chamber? Right. Hayes Area Children's Center Board, there yeah. we go. Is because we um, uh, basically connected with to that entity because of Part C, right? So uh, we do discuss center issues, but I'm, I'm primarily there to represent the district uh, because of the Part C connection. Um, Lance, I assume you'll be more than happy to stay on the foundation board? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I didn't really ask, I just assumed. Um, and the technology committee. And technology committee. Okay, that's good. Any, what do you want to right now volunteer for the, any of the others? I am. I would be happy to be on the early childhood connections. And if somebody else wants that one. Okay. Which uh, one was that, Lori? That's the top early one, childhood. the Early Childhood Connections Policy oh, Committee. okay. It's not. I honestly can't tell you much about that. Well, I can't. Shanna can't. Okay, good. Donna's back. Donna runs the connection. No, Donna's here. That's right. I serve as executive director, but policy council meets once a month over there at noon hour. So okay. So we'd be asked to attend that, but mm -hmm. it's a really good committee to be on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I, you I, I feel like I have some experience sure. in that, that area. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh -huh. Okay. I would volunteer to be on the rec. Great. Okay. Um, and? I would be willing to do the KASB. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, Sophia's on there still, and uh, okay. I don't think we have a problem having two oh, reps. Oh, no, that's but, Yeah. And again, I, I can, we can modify these as time goes on. Sophia is not here today, but she's still on the board, so let's leave her on that committee. <laughs> and so there, while there are other committees that may not necessarily have a board member, is that my understanding? So like the, mm -hmm. the insurance committee I know is one that I've heard of, but are there other committees of, that have a need? Or? These are the ones that we recognize as needing to have a board member on. That doesn't mean we can't have board members attend other, uh, be on other boards, I mean committees. It's probably in policy where there, yep. there are certain committees that are board appointed members, and right. so this is an annual right. activity right. that's right. done. But yes, there are other committees okay. that board members can, can be, be on. These are just the required list so far. Okay, that's all thank we you. have. I think you got everybody filled. Yeah, we're good. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the next item. Um, Ron, do you want to talk about the vaping policy? Yeah, we have just uh, two policies to run by you this, this evening. Uh, this is a first uh, look uh, for the board. Won't ask any action this evening, but uh, you can ask some questions, and then we'll come bring these policies back to you next month for okay. approval. Two, two policies. One is uh, just a, a investment of funds policy. Uh, this is basically, and it's just wording, it's language. Uh, they are basically taking out the word bidding. So if, 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 if an institution wants to uh, have our business for our funds, uh, they would not bid it. Okay. They would make a proposal. Um, okay. This is just language. Um, lawyers, right, Bill? They just, that, they're all <laughs> hung up on language. So um, you are welcome. If you'll look through that policy, you will see the... the uh, Bidding has been scratched out and proposals okay. has been added in. Um, I don't really think it, it changes anything that we do, um, but it just, it's, uh, this is a recommended policy from KSB. Okay. Uh, also, the, the other policy that is uh, being recommended, and this is really, uh, really being recommended from our State Department, from KSD, um, they're asking us to 
uh, in our policies, and basically it's our tobacco or other products, I guess, and they're really wanting a definition of an electronic nicotine deli delivery system. And, and they basically the policy, and, and this is our policy other than you will see in the electronic nicotine delivery system, it gives a, a really thorough definition of what that could mean. You know, a, a, a device that delivers a vaporized solution, including nicotine or possibly THC or any other substance by means of a cartridge or other chemical delivery systems. Some such definitions shall include, but may not be limited to any electronic cigarettes, vape pens, hookah pens, cigars, cigarillos, pipes, personal vaporizers, and these electronic nicotine delivery systems are not FDA approved uh, as nicotine replacement therapy devices. And so they're just asking, uh, we're just kind of trying to keep up with the times just to have a really more clear and concise definition when it comes to electronic devices. So those are the two policies. That's, and you're, you're pretty fortunate because usually there's a whole long list. Uh, it's been, I have not seen it this short a list before. So um, once again, I'll, I'll try to answer as many questions as I, I can answer. Um, and once again, we'll bring these back to you next, next month. So this would be board policy and then it would need to go into the uh, school handbooks? Well, yes, of course, this is not necessarily, I mean, we want our school handbooks to kind of connect with what our, our policy is, um, of course, and so, I, I, of course, we could talk to our administrators and make sure that they maybe want to include some, a better, clearer definition of what an electronic uh, delivery device, nicotine delivery device look, is actually. Uh, sometimes people get hung up on, well, this really isn't a, Electronic, yeah, it doesn't say that. So this pretty much spells out almost anything that, that would deliver any kind of substance. So. so is the protocol basically, is this considered a first reading? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then next month we will yeah. go? Okay. Sure. It'll, it'll, look, it'll look very, I mean, it'll, I won't change anything. I'll just throw it back in front of you. Um, if you have any questions prior to or maybe things that you've come across that you want to know about. Um, but this is just, uh, just part of our policy procedures. And usually once or maybe even twice a year, you'll have some policies to, and these are all recommended. This is kind of unique that KSDE is recommending this. Usually they come from KASB. Right. But yes, that's the procedure we usually follow is bring something for discussion, uh, then one meeting and then the next meeting or maybe the meeting after the next meeting, vote on it, uh, giving us time to contact the administration, ask questions and get answers to things. This one's pretty straightforward. Yeah, this will be brought back in the February 24th meeting, yeah. not the work study session. Not that I'm worried about these, but I'm just curious, do normal policy requests, changes go through legal review before it gets to us, yeah. or would we have to ask for that no, step? No, these, these, are, these are done at the, have, uh, there's a legal team at KSB. With these have, they are, yes. but in general, we can always and, assume and that Tammy, legal I, review I review the agenda and all yeah. the attachments and look at all the policies so in we, advance, too. Good. Yeah. So that assumption is something we can move forward and know yes. that you've blessed it. Good. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> All right, uh, any more questions on that item? If not, we'll move on to item 7.2, district building and grounds pickup bid. Uh, once again, uh, Rusty and I have been talking and, and we wanted to uh, get this in front of you. Once again, this is just a uh, first look at uh, bids for a pickup. Um, you have under, there's several bids, I think these are four bids uh, that we have included from various dealers. And I also have Rusty here to answer any questions. And then we have a recommendation uh, to uh, purchase um, from Lewis Ford. Rusty, are we able to get those off the state contract? I had uh, Russ look at this, and I'm going to be right up front with you. Buildings and grounds. I'll do it all day long. Vehicles, not my thing. So <clears throat> I went to Russ, told him sort of, uh, Jamie and I went to Russ, told him sort of what we were wanting to do and, and stuff. They put the bid spec together for us and put it out. So basically after they got it together and they went through how they're, they're purchasing, this is what they brought back to me. I don't think the pickup that we were looking for, they could get on state contracts. So they went out and just took local bids and then um, non-local bids. 
Okay. And uh, you can see the one at Long MacArthur and Salina and the one here at Lewis, there's like a $2 difference. And for $2, go ahead and get it in town. <laughs> so, and that's pretty much, like, if you're wanting to know very much about the vehicle, I, no, I'm, I'm not going to be your guy. <laughs> And I, and I really appreciate uh, going the local, even if it's, uh, I know we'll have to talk if it's more than a certain amount, but I think it really sends a message when we're able to go with local, local vendors. The other thing, when I put the cover sheet together, we're looking at setting this up to move snow and also put a Tommy lift on it. So that, that price is in there, even though I wouldn't have had to brought it in, it would have been below, but I want you to know the total price so that you... Cool. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Trusty. Thank you. Back to my spot here. All right. <clears throat> Let's move to executive session. Uh, we have two executive sessions tonight. Unless there's anything any board members want to say before we move on. All right. We have two executive session meetings tonight. First is to review the superintendent's evaluation. And the second is to discuss negotiations with Hayes and EA. So, first item. I move that the Board of Education recess into executive session for uh, personnel matters for...